And now we're about to see sheep in the natural habitat taking acid. <laughs> he sat himself already. <laughs> That's staying in. Hello and welcome back to your weekly acid trip. And this week we're going to be talking about Foxconn and everything to do with it. Jason, what did we talk about last week? Last time on Sheep on Acid, we discussed... Bo- discussed? No, fuck He's it up. drunk. He's drunk already. Yeah. We discussed... Stated. Bob Lazar, UFOs, and buttholes. If you want to know what all of those things are linked, listen to episode three. We did We did speak about the unclenching uh, of buttholes as they sat down. Oh, the disclaimer. The disclaimer, yes. Uh, it, it, it goes without saying that this very factual podcast with no facts at all is definitely adult content. So if you have any children in your vicinity, then please running headbutt them in the chest in order to cause them enough pain that they will run away or or the flying headbutt can be aimed at their you know their forehead region that should render them unconscious long enough for you to listen to the totality of this podcast in relative peace. Um, we Chris do ben not condone that. child abuse. Yeah, we do whoa, not. Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Cut that bit out now. You can't talk about Chris Benoit. He <laughs> killed everyone. And himself. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're de- it, it's definitely staying in. It's definitely staying in. <laughs> but uh, just as also a disclaimer to the disclaimer, we do not condone child abuse. Um, we just think that you should punt them out of your vicinity while listening to this podcast in any way that is reasonable while not killing them. Because, you know, children are children are hardy creatures. They recover. They heal. So anyway, anyway. Today we're going to talk about Foxconn. What is Foxconn? Well, they make everything or at least 40% of all consumer electric goods. Um, what do you three know of Foxconn? Just to, to kick it off. Uh, when I worked in a said um server company uh, that's where all the electronics were made um so the company would go and actually audit how they made their parts of there i had no idea at the time foxconn was what it was and um, it's only after that i realized that it's uh not a great place to be you're a way. terrible person <laughs> i'm the problem yeah, yeah, you're part, well, you're part of the problem. So yeah. they went over and audited and went, wow, this is awful. Let's continue to buy our things yeah, yeah. from here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Owen, what if what have you heard about Foxconn? I mean, yeah, I've seen the documentaries. Um, mm, I used to, I watch some documentaries. I used to like sell and repair iPhones and all of that, so you'd always hear of all this stuff going on or you re- read about it. Um, yeah, look, I think... It, look, people might not be aware of the name Foxconn, but I think everyone has heard about the factory in China with suicide nets. And I think they've I don't think people even yeah. re- realize, like uh, we were discussing off air, that they are in multiple co- countries. You know, there. I think there's one factory that's kind of known as Foxconn City, or yeah, the, Shen- main, Shen- the main Shenzhen. The main Shenzhen, yeah, that's but, it. But like that's probably the one that causes the most commotion, really. But. Uh, yeah, they're, we'll, they're, we'll get we'll massive. get to that bit later. But yeah, they're they're huge. They're massive. Darren, what have you heard? Yeah, well, I probably um, like like Owen said. I didn't know the name behind the company. Um, like you'd always hear stories of um, like these massive factories. Like you knew Apple and Nokia and all these things were making like the products for dirt cheap. You knew there was being massive factories. Their conditions were terrible. Um, I just didn't know, like, I looked up, like, only when you told me a few weeks back, that was the name of it. Um, and then small bit of the, small bit of the quick search and find out how bad it is and just how, well, how bad the conditions are, but also how massive they are. Like literally like every company, every product, electronic product you have in your house probably came from there. Yeah. It's um, nice. it's actually crazy. So that's the gist of it. I don't know very little about the. Very little about the name and the peak, the the, the company, is not the history of the company, but you like mostly know about the the horror stories from there, like. Mm. And to to kind of elaborate on the point Darren and Owen just made there about you know them being everywhere, and also making everything. Just to just to give you a quick rundown, companies that get stuff made there, just to name a few. Amazon, Apple, Dell, Google, HP, Huawei, Intel, Lenovo, Microsoft, Nintendo, Nokia, Sega, Sony, Toshiba, and Xiaomi. And that's that's just the big names. There's there's more in there. Um, it's absolutely crazy. And and you know they're based 
again, in, in countries such as China, where the bulk of their factories are located, are the largest percentage country-wise, and um, Brazil, over Europe, India, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, South Korea, and in the United States. So, like, it's not really an understatement to say that they are everywhere. They're like a yeah. big, massive spider of electricness. Like, if you open up any electronic product, you'll pretty much, mm. somewhere, you'll find that name printed in there. Yeah, mm. like, I'm, like, I'm looking at... Say my microphone, my laptop, my phone, and I can guarantee you everything in like anything electronic I have here looking at me is about 10 different things. The TV, like it's all probably if I open them up, has their name stamped in it somewhere. Oh, so yeah, because they're they're huge in semiconductors as well. Like it's not enough to say that, oh, okay, well, these companies get get actual finished products made there. It's not just finished products. It's everything, you know, like a piece of a piece of a printed circuit board might be made yeah. there, made there. Yeah. A, a component that goes into a PCB might be made there. You know, it's it's they are literally everywhere. They're huge, and I, 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 honestly, I think I think you're right. I think that you know, you open up anything, they probably have a tendril in that 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 you know what, finished component. What you say? Forty percent of the world's electronics over from, over forty percent of the world's Jesus. consumer electronic goods. Yeah. Over 40%. Jesus Christ, that's insane. Yeah, they're like Genghis Khan. They just like get all the slaves lined up. Whoa. Yeah, well, they're yes, like, but... no, no, it's factual. It's historical. Genghis Khan used to line up the slave women and have sex with them all. And now we're all re- probably descended from him. Yeah, he practically repopulated all the people he killed. Yeah, he was good at that. He was like, yeah. well, I feel bad. You know, I killed 12,000 people yesterday. So line up the whammons. Um, I it's have like... no idea how his penis worked that hard. It's incredible. It's like cutting down a tree. You have to plant two in its place, you know? Yeah. And his penis was definitely working hard, you know what I mean? Uh, so he was an ethical mass murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, you know, oh, the, yeah, the, the they, red rage bloodlust and then the blue but you know, they can, sex lust. They can go, do you know when they go into like, they dig, um, they drill in the ice caps and stuff like that and they get like the ice that's been there for like thousands of years. Mm-hmm. They can actually plot with the oxygen levels in the, so the, the air that was trapped in the ice they can actually track where Genghis Khan was, or track where Genghis Khan was, because he wiped out so much of the population that like forests and stuff grew back, so more oxygen was available. And it's literally like when it, I don't know how they science it goes science. back. To, yeah, science, science, okay, not science. They, can, they literally go back all the different layers and literally, oh, there's more oxygen this layer. What year is it? Oh, and they check the years. Oh, yes, probably because of Genghis Khan wiping out half of the population of the world. So, uh, so yeah. Good guy, Genghis Khan. Ethical did, mass murder. Did they notice that the, the heat of the atmosphere went up because <laughs> of all the friction? I don't know. Because I guarantee, sex. I guarantee you he wasn't sound enough to carry around lube for all the women that definitely oh, did not want to have sex with him. Just use their I'm tears. just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, we should do an episode of Genghis Khan. We'll move on from there. Oh, yeah, uh, let's go back on to Fox on before we go on a bit further. Yes, so... I think I think really we we need to address the the only font in the room uh, without beating around the bush too much. So uh, you know allegations of poor working conditions and everything else have have kind of plagued Foxconn, um, particularly in China and you know for for forever really. Um, you know news news reports have highlighted stuff like long working hours, um, racism or discrimination between particularly I think it was Taiwanese workers and, and Chinese workers. Um and just general general really shit working conditions, you know, like they get paid nothing. Um, you know, in, in, in the, the plant that, that Owen mentioned Shenzhen, they're expected to live there, but they also have to pay rent for living there in their crappy dormitories and you know Throughout the years, obviously, people have raised concerns over this stuff. And, and Apple did actually audit where the likes of iPods and iPhones were made when, when iPods are still even a thing. And uh, they they basically disproved most of the bad stuff, but also did actually substantiate stuff like, um, you know, those claims of the security guards beating the shit out of workers if they were trying to leave and stuff. And uh, they actually, they, yeah, they found evidence that, that was legitimately happening, but you know, obviously they went in and they said, "Okay, we, you know, we're looking for we're looking for a C minus here. You know, if we just get like fifty five percent of of unsubstantiated claims, then we're good. We're good." So they went in, it's like, "Okay, he's beat he's beating the shit out of a worker. Not great, not great. We'll move guy on. Though, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. But there's no Balrog, so let's keep making the iPhones here. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Didn't Steve Jobs come out and say they're like they're they're grand or something like that? As in like um he like says he's he quoted to say something like they'll do or they're fine or something like that. Uh I think you, the you, audit yes. was oh. after he died. No, no, it was after he died. No, 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 the the, the first audit was two thousand seven. No, okay. there's one yeah, Steve Jobs two thousand and ten. Um Citing that the Chinese partner is pretty nice and is not a sweatshop. <laughs> okay. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Um, other important things to notice is the, the to note around the working conditions before we move on to the the suicides and whatnot is that you know at one point they were pushed to 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 let go like a shit ton of underage workers. So like you know very very you're talking you know less than fourteen years old uh, who were interning. Uh, so I'm doing fing- finger bunny things in the air because they were interning, so they were getting doing unpaid work, um, which is obviously complete nonsense. They were just they were just using them as slaves, uh, and also one particular one that you know you can find this very easily if you just Google Foxconn and go into Wikipedia. And then I would advise everyone to click through the um, the citations. It's it's interesting and kind of horrifying. Um, so there was a young fella called Chang Tingshen. I think I wrote it down. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. Harry. But he, Hmm? Yeah, yeah, his nickname Terry. is Terry. Terry, yeah. <laughs> Terry's chocolate orange. Um, Terry Shane. Basically, he he suffered an electric shock and fell in a factory accident. Now, there's not more information than that. That's all I have. But, um, so he suffered his electric shock. He fell over. They were like, Jesus, Terry, you've had a bit of a slip. So what did they do? They lobotomized him. They literally removed a chunk of his brain. Oh. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this actually happened as well oh. because his father. And fair play to him, refused to take their hush money, um, refused to settle over multiple, multiple instances. Um, and then finally, you know, Foxconn offered him a settlement to recant all of his claims and all that stuff and basically just, you know, kind of brush the whole thing under the rug. And he refused. And that's why we know about all that stuff. So all I will say is Terry's dad, fair play to you, because I can't imagine. Imagine one of you at work just kind of slipped and fell over. And they're like, "Fuck, lobotomize him." That's that's clearly the <laughs> you know that's a sensible approach. He's so good, we can't lose him. Yeah, Wait, yeah. Just I was reading there when I was on it. They Foxconn bought Sharp. Yeah. Oh, Foxconn yeah. bought Sharp, um, and they have. They also bought Belkin. They own Jeez. Belkin. They like they like I said they and they have oh, money to burn. Jesus. The amount of money they spent on Sharp is insane. I have it here, yeah. Where is it? It's uh, $6.24 billion. Yeah, yeah. And it was originally the offer of eight point something, but I remember oh, they um, Sharp had some liabilities they didn't disclose and all that no, stuff. No, they were going to buy 10% stake in Sharp for 800, 800 million, but the stocks plummeted and stuff. So oh, change. Out. Yeah, but there was also some crazy <laughs> shit about, you know, Sharp having undisclosed liabilities. That's fucking like that. insane. Sharp? Yeah, it's mental. It's absolutely I've, mental. Uh, oh, but like about the, Sharp? The, the sheer size of the factories is insane. It's like mind-boggling. Hundreds of thousands, not not hundreds, not thousands, hundreds of thousands of people work in a factory. Yep. And they yep. live in like a town, let's say, and they don't leave because mm. they're barely paid enough to, to pay do it, rent yeah. in that area or in that factory. So they're never going to have enough money to leave. And it's just a constant cycle. But hundreds of thousands, like what's the population of monster like <laughs> like people move from all over china just to work here like you say why does someone work there but like i think it's as bad wages go this is relatively like enticing to you know if you've got nothing uh, people get enticed to well work i was and then you're I, kind of locked in like it's very yeah, hard to leave yeah. you know? i was looking up something there and it was just doing that they were doing like interviewing people from the company um and they were saying that they did 10 hour days um you know six days a week and then overtime on a on a like on their seventh day, and uh, literally working seven, and they pull in just over five hundred dollars a month, and you're talking, you know, fucking eighty hour weeks, like that's. Yeah. How right, much is the point there, though? What? How much is the point there? I should I, I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I'd love to see the Foxconn bar. They probably brew their own stuff. <laughs> I'd say I'd say it's such a happy looking spot. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> one thing as well to mention on the overtime and stuff that. Uh, you know, I mentioned kids earlier, but there's actually in China, children are allowed to uh, work up to 40 hours per week. That's right, yeah. Um, and, you know, they were found in violation at multiple times. Now, just to put that into perspective, 
Uh, I know myself and, and Jason are contracted to work less than 40 hours a week. All right, you know, you'd be tired after a third of weeks at work. Oh, get um, Big bad Daz, you do what? A long week and a short week? I do 48 hours weeks. So it's four shifts of 12, so it doesn't matter. Weeks weeks and days mean nothing to me. Ah, yeah, but you get four days off. And then Owen, you do... I do. But you're just, you're I'm just contracted selling. to do 37 and a half. Like, so. You're still selling drugs. You don't You don't work. Uh, no. Hard time. Yeah. <laughs> hard time. That's what it is. Yeah, we well, know where you live. Children. We've seen your area. You sell I only drugs. supply acid to the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you ever watched the IT crowd where your man just tells people to turn things off and on again? That's all Owen does all day. And now while, still, while slinging meth. And now he gets to do that in the comfort of his own home as well. Yeah, we're just we're just gonna wait for like people to bash through the windows now. And Owen's like, oh, I just have met, bro. It's just <laughs> met. Um so look, I think we'll we'll talk about the uh, the big massive splatter on the floor in the room, the suicides. Um, you know, this is actually insane <laughs> to, to my mind. So one second, I just want to make sure I get the numbers right now. I wrote all these down. Their, their, initial, their initial like rebuttal against this, again, this is a fact with zero, zero looking up, right? I just noticed from my head, probably wrong, um, that from the sheer number of people are actually there, they equate it to the, it's generally close to the average, the national average. That's what oh, they said. You know but what it's mean? happening Christ. in your factory. Yeah, they're like, oh well, it was got yeah. even if they're outside the factory, it's gonna happen. So they may as well do it in the factory. You know that, I mean? that must have been the PR firm though, because in yeah. 2010, 14 people literally killed themselves working at Foxconn because they were so sick of working there. So in answer to this, Foxconn did actually install the the much talked about on this show, suicide nets. You know, just in case someone happen to decide to fling themselves off an internal section of the building, they'd get caught by this, you know, happy, friendly net. And then beaten to death by your Chinese security guards. And then beaten to death guards. by the security guards, yeah. Um, but then... What are you doing? <laughs> after, after those 14 deaths, they actually, they, you know, they installed their suicide nets, very helpful. Instead of improving working conditions and stuff, they just said, here's a net to catch you like a little fishy. And then they hired a PR <laughs> firm in order to put a positive spin on this. Like, yeah, but look, the, the net is is a happy color. So when they jump off, they land in the net and then they're happy. Wasn't um, there one guy who reported to his superiors, he had like a, a prototype iPhone. Like it is going back years. Like, he lost it, yeah. He lost the prototype phone somehow. And he was literally beaten within an inch of his life by yep. security guards. Yep. And then killed of, himself afterwards. Well, I killed himself afterwards then. So that's but did he like kill himself though or did he yeah, kill like himself? Lost, like that's kind of the lucrative way to like get yourself a bit more extra money is just like, right, if I can get a finished product or something in my hands and try and sell it and the black markets in Shenzhen yeah. or whatever, it's mm. like that's how you increase your wages. Yeah. And like they have incredible security trying like to watch you, even just to stop like photographs of leaks of parts coming out, you know. Like every year when there's a new iPhone, six months ahead of time, there's some terrible webcam photo of like this is what the shape of it's going to look mm, like or whatever. Yeah. like the guys who do that are risking their lives and then yeah the guys who actually manage to smuggle something out like it's it's crazy that you can be put in that position or, like wage wise what what i what i love um and before we continue with suicide think suicide things is one i remember reading a report and i can I, I i'll try to find it afterwards and, and put it in a pin comment or something but i remember reading an article uh, written by a very brave journalist in my opinion who literally walked the whole surrounds of the shenzhen factory trying to get in each gate and then one day he came across a security guard because he'd, he'd been living in the town that's local to it and asking around, like, how do I get in? How do I get in? They're like, you pretty much can't. And what he did is he approached the guard and said, uh, I really need to use the bathroom. Can I use the bathroom? And he still doesn't know, did he, did he get lucky? And I can't actually remember his reporter, he or she, but either way, he got in to go to the bathroom. And then pretty much just got lost in the massive factory city, taking pictures and documenting it. And realized that he was definitely being hunted he or she was being hunted because could see security guards freaking out and was caught and kicked out and they did take lots of uh, his photos but i think he, he he'd swallowed an sd card or something so there's certain photos there but saw the suicide nets saw the dormitories saw the conditions and it just said it was in all in all as shitty a shithole as, as we imagined it to be like an unwiped arsehole crusted poop on the bum in and around the bum rim darren you would not like to lick that one as we know you're partial to licking the bum holes but I jump like here the one with the obsession with bum holes 
Don't question my, my preferences, okay? You're the one Please. literally wanted to postpone this podcast because you had liquid <laughs> poos coming out of said butthole. <laughs> I did, I did. We can confirm that for the listeners. Um, my bowels, they weren't forming the poop the way poop should be formed. It was just kind of <laughs> like like in Team America when your man spews vomit everywhere. Onto the, that was what yes. my arsehole was doing. My arsehole was essentially his mouth just going blah, 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 all over the toilet, which <laughs> like is terrible. Jackson Pollock. Because if that's ever happened to you, and you do that on a toilet you know that you're like it, the flush just doesn't work there's, there's shit spray everywhere you know what it's I mean it's just weird. rotten it's horrible it's, it's like how did it explosively get there yeah you know stop eating those explosives uh, you know anyway back to the suicide right so after they <laughs> installed <Jesus Christ>. <laughs> after <laughs> they installed I stay on topic no matter what um, after they installed the suicide nets after the 14 people killed themselves one thing that I find Depressing and also interesting, right, is, so for, inst- for instance, from 2012 to 2013, um, three younger Foxconn employees were, were reported to have died um, jumping off buildings externally, right? Now, those are ones that I would imagine they literally were in such open view that they couldn't really deny it. I don't believe that they're reporting all of the suicides in there if working conditions are still as bad. I just don't, I don't buy it. I don't, I don't buy it because they're like, oh, I put in suicide nets and no one dies anymore. Are you telling me that people in this particular factory, and I do not mean to make light of suicide, it's awful. And if you need help, reach out to the Samaritans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's loads of people. We'll drop some links in the description just to be safe because if anyone is having those type of thoughts and I know this is very, a very not serious podcast, but in all seriousness, call someone, talk to someone. You're grand, right? Um, but, Obviously, jumping off things is not the only way that people do commit suicide. You know, there's there's many ways that we're not going to give suggestions either. But they're like, oh shit, okay, they jumped off the external walls. Can't really hide that one. They've uh, they've dented the ground. Um, I I don't buy that. That that's I don't I don't think that's it. I think there's way more way more there happening, especially when um, everyone's favorite place, Wuhan. Darren was talking about threatened mass suicides in Wuhan. I think it was 2012. Um, like over 150 or 200 people uh, threatened to commit mass suicide if factory conditions weren't improved. How do 150 people get together and be like, do you know what would be better than this if we all killed ourselves because this is shit? Please make it better. You know what? How bad does it have to be? Well, I, I would mean, love like going to work yeah. with suicide nets like above your head. Do you know walking into the factory is not great for morale. You know? No, I used, no, I, no. Used to, I used to work in air and I thought that was pretty bad. <laughs> like, I think that's a we fair comparison. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, to be honest, with, air probably, no, suicide nets are probably too expensive for air. They'd probably. Yeah, no, they wouldn't air. invest in them. They'd just keep no. hiring people. They'd make them yeah. out of chewing gum, like their yeah. whole back end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, air are shit. But I'd love, like, I don't understand, like, 150 people threatening mass suicide. I, I just love, like, was that a last resort or was it just like them going, you know what, fuck, it can't be ours doing anything. This is the only thing that's going to get through to them. And it didn't get through to them. Like, you would literally have played your the, the only card you have, if that's the case, if you go mass suicide. Yeah, but you, you'd imagine that probably is their last step. They're like, hey, remember, remember the shit storm? You hired a PR firm last time. You know what I mean? Imagine if 100, that was for 14 people. Imagine if 150 of us did it. Um but the, the sad thing is, really and truly, um, the people who did kill themselves for whatever reason they had at the time, um, it didn't really make a difference, did it? Foxconn has just continued to thrive. No, and the giant, they're expanding. Like, you see... Um, yeah, they are expanding, yeah, 100%. Bro- like, last year, they broke ground in the US, so they're in Wisconsin. Trump was at their opening of it. Of course he was. Uh, he has, like, this... They have a plant there, and it was something like 3,000 starting off, and they're, they're planning to ramp it up to 15,000 or something. One could say it was the bigliest plant. Yeah, and, like, it's in, like, some place like Wisconsin, which doesn't sound like... Uh, from my knowledge of America, it's probably not the most, like metropolitan place so not uh, LA not LA yeah exactly so like you get workers going in there yeah it's a grand job get into it just get cash and stuff but like well at least they have certain labour laws in the US yeah that's the other thing they'd be grand there but still the fact that it's been like a company like that has been endorsed is appalling enough isn't it look it it is it is let's be honest money talks and money is always going to win and that's And like if you name out the other countries there, like you had Brazil, you had like the Malaysia, Malaysia, like East India, Asia, India, India was be a big 
pov- you know, poverty stricken like, one. Yeah, but then like if you go, even if you go into the European countries, I think I saw it was like Hungary, like mm-hmm. was Czech Republic, and yep. Turkey, and they're going. Okay, fair enough. They're not what you probably classify as the most, say, modern of. The I European think you can nations. come out and say Hungary is a bit of a shithole. Uh, I think we all <laughs> saw that in the news, like over the last few years. Yeah. So, but like, still, you think the, the fact they're in Europe, you kind of think, oh, but like, surely they have to, like, be like the rest of the European nations. Nah, it's like if if, if you're going anywhere, that's terrible. Poland, like the, Poland's wages are shit. Yeah, that's true. You would have, and by the way, when I say shithole, I don't mean country-wise. Hungary actually looks beautiful. Mm. Oh, Poland, I've been there. Poland is beautiful. Um, but the wages are absolutely yeah. awful, and they they are in Europe, so it doesn't really actually mean yeah. jack shit. And I think so, it's 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 when they stay away from the euro, isn't it? It's as long as they don't adopt the euro, they don't have to go to um, you know, the European minimum wage, which means that they can just continue to absolutely fuck their citizens while still getting all of the benefits of being in Europe and the free <laughs> Did we go into the UK soon enough? Hey. Brilliant. When you go to like those countries uh, on holidays, you go to like get a coffee and it's like, that's 60,000 currency. And you're like, what? Is that, is that two euros? Is that 10,000 euro? And you just give them money. Yeah. It's crazy. And actually, just, just completely, <laughs> completely <laughs> off topic, right? Um, when I was in Poland, uh, I remember we went, we ate out, we ate out one night, or mo- mo- all of the nights, myself and, and the partner. Um, we ate out, and like, it, the whole total meal. <laughs> Come on. No, oh. that's, that, never mind. Um, we, 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 uh, oh, I see what you did. Anyway, anyway. You did it. You did yeah, it. Yeah, I did do it. It's fine. Um, but anyway, we, we, Ate at a restaurant. We now ate, we know what the uh, food most at a restaurant. Was fish pie on the menu? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with oral sex with a consenting partner, Darren. Is that what's making you laugh? It's the fact that you, you said not it, give it? your partner oral sex. Are you are you saying not what she consents? Not... No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Moving oh, swiftly no. <laughs> on, it was actually cheaper to eat out of the fancy restaurants um, than shop in the supermarkets because the supermarkets were actually like the food was the same price as here, but they earn like a tenth of what we earn. Yeah, rich. Wow, like seen, wow. Seen, like we're, talking, seen, we're talking about Foxconn and poverty, and you're you're boasting about being rich. Do you ever watch that film, that uh, Euro Trip, and they they go to like some. Eastern European country and it's like $15 they think they're broke and next you know like they get to like a penthouse and like strippers and like champagne <laughs> brass room and whatever and like manicures and pedicures how much that cost us oh like 50 cents yeah yeah <laughs> it's true in some places um, the other thing I want to talk about uh, the Germans the Nazis own Foxconn just throwing that in there you know we didn't say anything crazy yet so Nazis own Foxconn um the, so the, the, I want to I want to talk. I, I was going to get onto his air fault next, but first I want to talk about robots because Foxconn have been making a concerted effort to replace their employees with robots. Because again, how could you possibly improve working conditions and give these people who definitely need jobs jobs? As Owen said, people literally migrate across China, which is colossal to work here. Um, but now they're just going to replace them with robots because why would you want to pay someone more? Um, and at the moment, I think they've over, well over 50% of their employees are replaced with robots and that's only going to continue. So that probably is the future there, which is a good thing, I suppose. But, you know, are they just going to move the problem somewhere else because they're a huge former employer and now no one's going to have jobs? Anyway, anyway, um, is it our fault? Discuss. As consumers, like? Yes. Yes. It is. Well, it is, but... What can like what can we do to to avoid it? As in, like if you say like forty percent of that? just I'm just reeling you in because you asked the question. Have you ever heard of the Fairphone, Darren? Yeah, I was reading about this today. No, what's the Fairphone? It's, it's just one. It's just one example. So the Fairphone is an ethically sourced and created and repairable uh, phone. Um, you know, as as a, uh, in opposition to buying any of the big brands like Samsung and and Apple. And by the right. way, I don't think Samsung Samsung are made in uh, Foxconn, are they? They have their own factories. I think. Doesn't appear so. Yeah. yeah, I think Samsung actually have their own factories, well, which are probably yeah, just but, as bad. Yeah, for this, for, it's a fair phone grand. But what about every other product we, I I own, and like stuff like. Say stuff I don't need, fair enough, like my laptop. You know, I need that sometimes, but like my phone, you kind of do need a phone nowadays. Okay, get your fair phone, but like other things, like even a TV in your house, radio, stuff like that. Like, how can you 
are there options out there to go right? You know, I'll make the morally just decision and buy a, a product that's a bit more expensive, but I know it doesn't come Fox Con. And but you, you made. Do, sorry, go huh? on, go on, go on, go on, keep going. But you can do it for a lot of products, but can you do it for, for them all? You've made another wonderful point, Darren. And it's actually what I was hoping someone would drive us into is I completely agree with you. I know about the Fairphone. Would I buy one? No, because I had a quick look and it looks horrendously awkward to buy mm. one. And at the end of the day, what you need to do, and this, by the way, this goes for environmental protection. It goes for buying consumer electronic goods that are made not made in a horrible, horrible place. You need to make it easy for me. And we are the average people. Like, if it's not easy... If it's not supported by all the networks, if it's not, you know, supported by the latest release of Android, I'm not going to buy it. It needs to be able to be, you know, work with my car's radio, Bluetooth thing mm. it needs to work with, you know, all of the Bluetooth things I have. It needs to be fully supported and do them or I just don't want it. And, you know, the same as if I walk into a shop and, for instance, if there was two options and I walked in, and I said, OK, I want a television. And they said, well, here's your latest sharp um that five people died to make sir and here's mm. your ethically sourced and built uh tv that's 50 euro more expensive i then i would buy yeah. the ethically sourced and built tv but, but same, it has to be that easy it's the same with you know, if you have what if you ever go to the supermarket and the, the fair trade products so you have yourself say coffee you have your coffee that's not fair trade you have your coffee that is fair trade it's a big fucking sticker on the fair trade stuff saying you know, this is blah, 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 this is fair enough. It's a bit more expensive. And then you go, right, I, I want to make that more just decision. I want to buy that stuff instead. That's, yeah, exactly what you're saying. That's how you do it. But it's not happening. Will it happen? I don't think so because it's grand for your, yeah, it's grand for your coffees and stuff when it's, you know, 50, 60 cent in a difference. If it's a TV, a phone, when you're talking 50, 60, 100 euro in a difference, that's when people go, eh. How much? How yeah. much is the Fairphone? I, the Fairphone sure is kind of, is. I, I looked it up. So the Fairphone is like an averagely spec phone. I think it's actually like competitive to like a 200 pound phone, but it's sold for like 400. Oh, wow. um, which is going to happen if you're going to try and ethically mm. source something. Yeah. So I, I was looking it up today and I was like, uh, what would be like, the? I was looking literally fair trade price for an iPhone, whatever. So the kind of consensus on it was like um, an iPhone could be say a thousand dollar phone but it could have materially, it could be worth four hundred dollars worth of components. Yes. But we're also paying the extra for like the research and development and like the massive advertising campaign. Like when you get a product in your hand, you haven't paid for just the physical mm. product. Like you've paid for every step yeah. of the way to get that product into your hand. Like even the but, support after, even though yeah. like not saying it's good or anything, but it is there. Like they hire people to be on the phones and everything exactly. like that. Yeah. And and like so like a fair trade. I was looking it up. So like a fair trade f- chocolate bar is like what they can be. They can be four euro for a single bar mm, versus yeah. like one euro for a, 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 a conventional chocolate yeah. bar that's probably made using terrible methods of cocoa beans, whatever. Yeah. But like, I think the genie's out of the bottle. I don't think we can go back like fix this price wise. Like I, I think if like a fair trade made phone would literally be. Two thousand euro, two thousand dollars. Like, mm. if if these companies are going to still keep their massive profit margin, that you know they're that they're that they've grown maintain. accustomed to. But yeah, I think yeah. I think that is a that's a great point, right? And here's the other thing: is we replace our phones now, like they're throwaway, they're throwaway items now. Mm. Um, I actually looking at it, and I did just just click into it myself. I would not mind buying the Fair Plus, Fair Phone Three Plus because it's repairable and it's upgradable yeah. and it's modular like if samsung That's came great. out with their high end you know this phone costs 1500 2000 euro and like all phones are on contracts now anyway you pay for it by the month or whatever else is part of your bill like if they said okay this is a five-year contract but this phone is going to be upgradable that you can buy those parts you know you can have your spare batteries you can have your extra batteries you can interchange everything easily and relatively cheaply because you're just paying for the replacement part rather than paying to replace something that's in a sealed unit that isn't designed to be repaired anymore i would go for that i would like i'd actually happily pay the extra to be able to fix something you know i buy old cars and, and old stuff like that because because you can fix them. Jesus, 500, 470 quid for that Fairphone three plus. It's it's a lot. It's a lot of money, but yeah. but it actually isn't that bad specs wise. I think we can agree that is an outright purchase. So you know you're yeah. not being hooked into a contract. And and my favorite part is if you look up at the very top there, they have the you know there are three tabs there: smartphones, spare parts, and accessories. They have spare parts. You can click in there right now. You've um, 
earphone oh, yeah. spare cable, Fairphone 2 smart camera module is only 20 euro. Uh, the top module, 30 euro. You know, all these little bits and pieces, the back, the back cover is 25 euro. The battery mm-hmm. is 30 euro. Like that is excellent in my opinion that it's just like, okay, well shit, my battery is going, buy a new one, 30 quid. Who's going to complain about that? You know what I mean? No, you're absolutely right, yeah. This episode was sponsored by the Fairphone. <laughs> but the only thing the only thing with that is you'd have to be somewhere tech savvy to actually put it in yourself. That's the only thing. Probably not. It's probably like Lego plug and play. Yeah, that's yeah. what they made. If yeah, you look yeah. if you look on the spare parts there, if you actually click in there, you see yeah. on the top picture. It's just it's literally plug and play. Yeah, but again, you know, there's a lot of cretins out there. Well, yeah, but then you know, this could also actually support the return of repair shops. You know, you bring it to someone, you know, they've bought in these parts in bulk and they throw them in for you for the 10 euro, 20 euro charge on top. Mm. You know, we, I think at the, at the very, very bottom of this, and this, this actually probably should be an episode we could do in itself, the very bottom of this, you know, making everything ethically sourced and, and, and you know, it's everything's going to get more expensive if we go that yeah. route for a while. But I think the further we go that way, the real key here is, like Owen said, about, you know, the profit margin – those big companies and all their major shareholders and all that crack are going to have to accept that humongous profit they make every year can't last. And they have to stop making things that well, are designed to be thrown away when they're broken. Yeah. Well, the only thing is, as you said before, with say Foxconn, they've decided that they're, um, they've replaced the workers with 50%, 50% with robots. It's more, it's right. like 70% now, I think. 70% now. So you're saving somewhere on, your labor, they're, even though you're they're getting paid fuck all, they're still paying on labor. So you, you, they can justify it that way. They can make up their losses that way. Even though I know the machines need maintenance and upgrades and stuff like that, but they're still be recovering some of their losses there. So the, the profit margin, even though prices stay the same, the profit margin will probably still increase. Or say profit margin will still probably increase over the next few years with the robot by replacing the robots anyway. Well, yeah, and I think I think that's like a, a long term play by them. You know, mm. like yeah, they, you have your initial investment, but yeah. then you have your uh, what, what's it called again? Your depreciation. So they'll mm. buy robots and depreciate them over ten years. Like they're they're like okay, these need to work for ten years. Whereas the people, you know, you hire them in, they're pretty cheap to train for that stuff because you know from from the sound of it, they just don't train them. It's a production um, line anyway, so it's just yeah, and, uh, pop and in it, and play. Kind yeah, of and if, you, if they if they kill themselves, you just pop in a new one. Yep. Um, as, well, as I was going to say, actually, it's just like say we we can kind of put the blame on Foxconn in all of this too. But I think even if they did move over to like a robotic factory, it still wouldn't be a hundred percent like that they're ethically sourcing their materials. So like, yeah, all the precious metals that go into you like creating semiconductors, a lot of them come out of like mines in Africa. And I think oh, yeah. China have a massive kind of political influence over some African countries. So I could mm. be wrong. I think the they Congo, did, didn't they? Um, I think the they Congo donated. They've, they've, they've taken, given them like yeah. million, billions to um, for infrastructure and like government systems and stuff like that. Yeah. So until like some of this stuff is looked at too, like we really, there's a few areas that need to be addressed to kind of get us out of the woods and make ethical electronics. But as I said, I think the genie's out of the bottle on this one. I don't mm. think we're going to fix this whole situation at this stage. It's going to take a massive, yeah. massive mindset shift in like everyone's, like everyone, consumer-wise. Like, but why, we have, why do we have money to buy shit? And mm. why do we want to save money so we can spend money on the other shit? You know, it's... But it, like... It, 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 it keeps... It's a snowball effect. But mm. the thing is, like we had... A lot of us made that moral kind of that choice a few years, that consumer choice a few years, like with the fair trade stuff, we decided to buy more ethically. Even, but when it comes to technology, like it's electronics, it's even though people know about it, it's still not the issue. You know, we talk about nowadays the issues that are plastic, the environment, the plastics environment, and stuff. And people are making those moral, morally, moral morally conscientious choices now it just doesn't seem to pop into the head when it comes to electronics yeah, no, but she, people, what, people are just trying to keep up that's no, all it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not even that right it's it, if you look at it and i'm going we're definitely going to get all murdered by china at some point all right at a basic level why did people change and get buried you know, from 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 shitty food practices to good ones there was videos everywhere you know, charities were able to go over and show you actually how horrible this was. The same with palm oil. They were able to show you the orangutans oh, yeah. literally on fire and stuff because it wasn't in a country like China. You try to go in and get footage or, you know, cover these journalistically, 
they just tell you to fuck off. So it then it's very hard to put that in front of people to show them this is terrible and we need to change it. And then it's much harder to get that mindset shift that you're talking about. But also, Owen, I will say, I do disagree with you on the genie out of the bottle. I think I think it is definitely doable. Um, I think it, you know, it, like I said, it is definitely 100% about education and getting people to know just how shit this is. Um, you know, and it needs to be made easy for us as well. But definitely there's a place that, you know, governments, I think, could legislate for this. They, they could come in and I think it's starting to happen slowly because we're running out of a lot of raw materials, even metal wise and stuff, you know, it, it, it's happening with aluminium and bauxite and all that stuff. Right. So they're coming in and they're saying, okay, well you actually have to make this recyclable. So, you know, your whole reduce, reuse, recycle thing. So if they come in and they say, okay, well you have to make this recyclable. What's better than recyclable reduce. If you reduce things breaking and just being dumped then you don't need to recycle them and that's where things come in as more repairable and modular and upgradable for instance like the xbox one series x that we talked about you know two podcasts ago right if all consoles became a big black box that's relatively pretty that's emblazoned with xbox and they say right okay well here's our next generation we don't need to make the case though you trade in your interior everything's backwards supportable and you drop in this new interior that plays all the new stuff way better and we take the old stuff and recycle it because they want to do that you know the, the, those raw materials are insanely expensive even the gold and platinum that goes into them so that's probably something that and that's just one tiny okay. subject you know okay it's definitely doable i just don't see the capitalistic society kind of doing mm, it. yeah like, you can buy a gaming pc and like that you can have your case and you can put all the pieces into it and you can keep your case for 10 years and keep putting changing out the bits in it i just don't see a consumer product to the end user no. doing that they're they're, they're going to want their shiny new case or whatever yeah but, yeah yeah Yeah, like the right to repair thing i think we should do an episode on it it's interesting kind of like in the motor industry and in electronics whatever. who definitely break those rules but uh i i just i i don't really see it happening it'd be great if it did i just i, I don't yeah. see it going that way the maybe way not anytime earlier, soon in our lifetime but yeah. I, I hope it does happen before i die so i can see it change. well the way, if, the, way, the way i was thinking about earlier was like right if smartphones came along like I, the original iphone was 2007 say if back then they were very expensive back then too like mm. people balked at the idea of paying mm. 500 dollars for a phone if it was ethically made and it was two or three thousand dollars and like only the uber rich could afford it whatever would it have taken off as much as it did? Probably not. And it maybe eventually it would have filtered down to the rest of us. Like, I don't think we'd all still be using 2G Nokia phones. But to a certain extent, like, even with this horrible stuff going on, you, you can say there's a good knock on effect of us all having smartphones, like stuff like citizen journalism, like that. People can sneak a camera into places a lot more yeah, easily yeah, yeah. now to report on something. Like, there's, there's great things can be done by us having these devices, but whether we can go back and fix this this whole situation i don't know and apparently good smartphone cameras do scare off the ufos as we discussed <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. you know so that that's a bonus because no one wants to get anally probed by aliens so we're back onto the buttholes well, so this is, three. <laughs> is it going to take so is it going to take a complete like say consumer shift cha- a change in their in their in their in their buying choices i, I think it'll be is, generational is it, but is it is it just? But is it purely on consumers? Is it going to be a case where like we as consumers have to do, it and then companies will have to change to suit us, or will it take that one big company, like Owen said there, like if Apple decided fifteen years ago to make you know what, it's going to cost two grand, but we've done the right, we've made the right decision. If they had done that, then it might have might have taken off, but it might have. But is it, it going to take? Yeah. Is it going to take that like a big massive company like say, Apple, like Google? Um, all the Am- even at Amazon now, like you, you man Bezos making billions a day. Is it going to take a company like him to go? You know what? Now is the right time to. We're going to try change the world, change it for the better in in this way. Fuck margins, fuck profit. We'll do this, and we you know, and the consumers will change with us. Okay, I do think we'd have to feed the CEOs of those companies a hell of a lot of asset to get them to think like that. But, <laughs> but that that said, right, it is. I I think, and I, I this is something I've always said. You know, putting taxes and stuff and all this shit back onto you know your average person is bullshit. It doesn't work. It doesn't help anything. It just makes everyone angrier. But the likes of big companies, Coca Cola, no plastic is bad, right? 
and they know that they can make make their 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 drinks and whatever else and put them into glass bottles because they still do it in the likes of Germany. They have to do it in Germany, right? But it's way easier for them to make plastic. So for instance, in the likes of the United States, Coca-Cola and other massive companies like that were actually after, uh, they were they were behind the introduction of lots of like recycle bins and stuff because it made the consumer feel better about the plastic. And then it all went to landfill anyway because they didn't have the local infrastructure in place to recycle that plastic. But they did that. They were behind that because they were like, okay, shit. Yeah, people know plastic's bad now. Uh, they don't want us using it, but we want to use it because it's cheap as shit and it's great and it's really easy for us to manufacture. We've invested loads in it. How do we make them feel better about it? So yes, I think it is 100% on companies to, to be less shitty and try to be better at what they do. But if you take it from just that one small example again with Coca-Cola, it's unfortunately <laughs> unlikely that they're going to try yeah. it. It has to come from us to say, okay, you need yeah. you need to stop doing this because otherwise we're going to stop buying your shit. Yeah, it's, it's all going to be smoke screen with companies, like as in the Coca-Cola example there. As mm-hmm. like They could say, oh, now next year, Foxconn's wages are up by 50%. But they'll just make it in another factory that they actually make down the road and then supply Foxconn and actually yeah, yeah, nothing, yeah. Gets, nothing gets made there. And it, it's just it's money, just money is the is the king in this. And if money, if if the red, if there's lines that are red and they go down instead of green ones that go up, people are getting caught, people are getting everything is getting caught. People it, are getting in trouble. Money. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's the that's just the basics of, of the business. They don't they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about the people underneath them. Doesn't no, matter. They never do. And I think that literally, I think everyone who gets to a certain position in a company kind of has to be a sociopath. Now, now, to start closing out this wonderful episode and very happy episode of Sheep and Acid. And, and it was a bit more serious than our usual ones. We apologize about that. We hope yeah, we did not clench well, we your buttholes too much. No, but it's important. Hold on. We don't apologize. We don't apologize for it. We said at the start, this podcast is going uh, to be about everything and anything. I did I, say I apologize for the buttholes clenching more, not for the content. Okay, that's fine. But all yeah, is good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but like the content wise, what we just, the topics we discuss, it's gonna be everything and anything. So fuck. Yeah, if you don't like it, fuck you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was gonna say fuck off, but yeah, okay. Fuck no, no, you I too. never said fuck. Fuck off. I said fuck you. No, I was saying fuck off. Okay, fuck you. Then fuck, fuck you. you fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, fuck you too. Fuck love you. you. Love you really. Um, yeah, so just please you. please listen. Week. You don't even have to listen. Just play it in the background. Just. Just get the view. Yeah, like, get us them sweet, sweet, tasty views. Um, but to, to close out before we say all like that stuff there. Like and share on Instagram. Yeah, do that too. But anyway, <laughs> um, how do you feel about being a consumer whore, Darren? Because you, like me, admitted that you are a consumer whore. Like, it's... To, uh, I'm going to be honest here. It's I'm going to walk away from this podcast and I'm going to sit down and play my uh, PlayStation. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play my PlayStation too. I'm not sure if that was made when Fox or Fox comes around when that was being made, and I don't care. Um, I'm probably going to play. I could play some music on my phone or my speakers. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to make much of a difference to my life. Um, because you're so far removed from it, you don't see it. Yeah, yeah. I don't see it. And but at the moment, it's was it nine o'clock at night. There's nothing I can do realistically to change it. It's Christmas season. I'm not going to do anything to change my uh, that kind of my outlook that way until maybe next year if I want even if I am. Yeah. So yeah, it makes fuck all difference to me. Unfortunately, um, life goes life. My life goes on with the exact same shit. And when you're talking with, like even when you're talking with the Fairphone, there I was looking at going. Yeah, I'll probably still buy a Samsung. So Darren is a remorseless human. Good to know. Good to know. Me, myself, I'm actually also a remorseless human. I'm fervently trying to buy the Xbox One Series X in time for Christmas so that I can enjoy myself as at the end of the day, I care about me and my happiness. But Mm -hmm. also, I think I would feel a hell of a lot worse about myself if the media managed to actually cover this on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. like they did for so long around, you know, Shitty farming practices, orangutans on fire, stuff like that. You know, if if you're if you're following all of the media, which I, I highly advise everyone to do, take a sampling from the far left media, take a sampling from the far right media, and then have a look at centrist media because it is actually kind of hilarious. Um, and trying to mishmash everything in together. We can do an episode on that too. I think Owen looks like he didn't enjoy that. No, I, 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 I was say it's just we have 
it, 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 this whole thing is just another one of those issues. Like we can't be mad about all the issues in the news all the time. No, 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 absolutely not. But, and like Darren says, he's gonna like he's gonna go and use all his products, like and probably because, masturbate using one of them. Yeah, but like hey, the, the damage hey, is done. Do you know, he's hey, bought those products. No. He's gonna use them. He's gonna enjoy them. Like if <laughs> we say, oh, he's gonna enjoy them. All right. He'll enjoy them. <laughs> if we say a company comes around and starts doing things more ethically, yeah, it'd be great if we could all just start supporting them. But it it'll all come down to price at the end of the day. As Jay says, money talks. Yeah, and, and just to finish off before I pass on to you fully about being a consumer whore and you dirty consumer whore, I actually would consider buying the fair phone because all I want from a phone is good battery. Like I don't like I don't do much with my phone. I occasionally take a picture with it. I have a camera for that. So for me, I actually would consider the fair phone, and I'd probably feel decent about myself. But you know, at the same time, if I look at them and you know that one's four hundred and something, and I can get another one of my my basic bitch level Samsung I'm probably going to buy the Samsung too because it's like half the price of that but you know I, I'll, I'll actually think about that one because the option is there so it's good to have the options there so I'm less slightly less of a terrible person than Darren I like to think oh, no, how do you no, feel about being a same. consumer or <laughs> the exact same piece of shit and you know it I am a piece of shit they come from buttholes <laughs> unless they're liquid <laughs> Unless no, it still comes from my butthole. It doesn't like shoot out and you know an extra hole somewhere. It just comes out the same hole, just faster and more liquidy. Jesus Christ! Go on. How do I, fo- how do I follow that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, yeah, I, I'm in this room here, surrounded by computers. Like, and it actually I, looks I, like I, you're sponsored by Apple. Yeah, yeah, you piece <laughs> of shit. And Dell monitors and all sorts. Like, look, I'm not, I'm not going to change. I don't think any of us are going to change. If there was an option out there, and like we said, it was fifty quid more, maybe we'd start to convert to that company. Yeah. But like you said about Coca Cola, I'd say they only did that like whole PR thing for like a year and then forgot about it. Like, if if a company came along and started offering phones ethically, we'd probably, yeah. 20% of us would move to them for a year and then that company would probably get bought by someone else and start going back to the shitty way to make money again. True, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I really, it, it will take a massive change to kind of fix fix all this. But yeah, I think all of us, we're all gullible. We're all just going to keep buying these things. I, I, I don't see a way to fix it. Right. I, I think I think any fix is going to be generational. I, I think, and I think we kind of miss the point that we were... We were here, the generation that the likes of fair trade and stuff came in, but we didn't do it. Do you know what I mean? It, it just so happens that now we have the option to buy fair trade, but we had nothing to do with that. That that option came in because of the work of others. So I think, I think you know, even those little little tidbits, like a couple of people buying a fair phone, giving some money to them. I would hope that the people who started a company like Fairphone, no matter how much money came in, they would just tell someone like Samsung or Apple to fuck off. But you know. At the same time, money does talk. If if I created a, some form of ethical business, and someone came in and said, "Do you want a billion dollars and you can retire and live the rest of your life in comfort and happiness?" I'd be like, "Yeah, yep." Yeah. You know what I mean? But I am a terrible human, as Darren said. Um, so you know, oh, that, actually, that's just a piece me. of shit. Sorry, he did, he did to clarify, he did call me a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but just, we're equating just... we're equating that to a terrible human, correct? Yeah, I suppose. Okay, good stuff. Jason, how do you feel about being a consumer whore? And to be fair to Jason, before he says anything, he is actually the least consumer whore of any of us because he's a tight, tight man. I was just going to say, I'm actually not consu- cons- that much of a consumer whore. Like, I don't I don't own a lot of shit. And I'm, I'm never really striving for the, the next piece of technology. I don't, I don't really care. But what I do care about is ease of buying. I mean, like that, that palm oil thing, right? For instance, it was in, let's say, there was a, a spray that I got for the pan in, in Aldi and it, it was palm oil. And I had never heard about this orang- orangutans on fire and palm oil. And it was You're there. a terrible person. And I picked it up and like uh, my partner um, said, like, you can't buy that. It's palm oil in it. Like, but I got it last week. And it was like, yeah, but you can't buy anymore. I was like, but why can't I? I was like, because it's bad. Why is it bad? It's here. I can buy it. It's in front of me. <laughs> I always get it. But this week it's different. Why? I don't understand. You know what I mean? That still got it because didn't know Ryan Tang's on fire. Um, so it's it's easy me if if something is easy to buy and it's the same price, yeah, no problem. I'll buy it. But if there's any loopholes I have to jump through, I I don't care. I and I'll admit that I am stone cold this kind of stuff. I I'm in my own bubble and I don't care. 
Yeah, and I, I yeah, I, I think a lot of people are like that. I mean, we're all you're, you're definitely a larger piece of shit to me and Darren, though, because I mean, <laughs> we have videos of you know, like the forests being or the jungle being chopped down, and you know, literal animals on fire, Jason, and they're killing indigenous people and replanting them for your dirty, dirty pamot. Like, you're terrible person. I actively don't watch that stuff. Like, I will actively go. Like, I don't want to see it. I don't. I don't Ignorance is bliss. That, that's uh, it. We can't be mad about all the issues. All exactly. The I course, actually yeah. don't watch the news because news is only bad shit, and I don't need that like negative crap. But see, this this is the thing, right? I I actually do listen and look at a lot of this, this thing, these things. But like I said, I am a piece of shit, and I'm able to completely compartmentalize it away. Like, hmm, that's interesting, and would be upsetting if I had proper emotions that a human should have. But I think yes. to Owen's point, if you're angry about all this stuff all the time what you see is what that happens is it degenerates into those people who you see trying to protest everything and they get nothing done and probably yeah. die very poor and unhappy. I don't want to be poor and unhappy. I'm happy in my bubble and I can look at those things and be interested in them and tell, you know, all the lovely listeners about it. But at the same time, I'm going to buy my Xbox one series X and play cyberpunk and be pretty happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. And not to like shit on anyone fighting for a cause. I, I'll fight for a cause, but like, you know pick a few causes and fight for them you don't yeah it is really like you will get yourself really down if you start looking at everything and getting upset yeah, about it absolutely as, as it, it, said. and that's what i was kind of saying is it's generational you know some people are going to do some things you know you pick your one or two things that go and said and do that you, you can't if you try to do everything you'll get nothing done yeah what are we covering next week i actually have no idea damn <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're taking a step away from the last few weeks. We kind of did like a technology um, kind of focus kind of aspect with Foxconn, Xbox, PS4, and stuff like but that. Bottles, UFOs, UFOs, yeah, the new tech and all that. Yeah, um, so, so, pyramids. Yeah. So, well, we're going back to kind of that mythology. We're going and folklore. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to cover Irish folklore slash mythology. So, Great. if you're interested in. Um, say the likes of uh, Banshee, Fairy Folk, Tom Bakunia, Sons of Oshnig, all this kind of old Irish stuff, um, old Irish folklore. Give us, a, give us a listen next week. It will be very interesting. And actually, we have a Grail Gore here, young Michael there. Was sí, filmed. por supuesto. Hablo. Yeah. So, <laughs> Hablo as Gwelga. <laughs> sí. So you will get... Uh, Lauriam hopefully... Gwelga. Oh, yeah. oh, Neil, Neil Shekoma. <laughs> so you will get the actual pronunciation of all these terms. And yeah, so hopefully you'll learn something about our culture and heritage and all that. Yeah. The, the actual pronunciation from a very unpracticed Gwelgar, I should say, because no one speaks Irish to me anymore. But if someone wants to, please reach out. I'll speak Irish to your lovely butthole. Seven people talk Irish in the West. That's about it. That's about <laughs> it. So, look, um, if you have lended us your ear holes, muchas Don't gracias uh, for Don't. us pouring our acid into them, our acid and bile, and also liquid poo. From my oh. perspective, that might have gotten me because then with the acid, if so, I apologize. It was a contaminated batch, but we don't have quality control here, thankfully. Much like um, Foxconn. Much like Foxconn. <laughs> oh, well, no, I mean, no, they put pretty good quality control actually for their components, but we don't. That's the important point here. Um, what we've gathered from this is Foxconn is terrible. Most consumer electronics are terrible. And we're all terrible people that don't really care when you break it down. And it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter because, you know, it's it's like the big machine. It's going to keep grinding on and you'll just get chewed up in the gear cogs if you don't get out of the way. Um, but yes, if you have opened your ear holes uh, for us, then... We also appreciate that. And if you were sitting down for this podcast, I personally appreciate the fact that your butthole was probably <laughs> slightly <laughs> soft, slightly spread. Stop. Because when you stand up, Stop. your butthole is more clenched. <laughs> we actually, as, as when we, would, <laughs> we actually tried to make this a serious podcast, like at the start, we actually talked about trying to make this go big. And this is what we're getting. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking facts, you know. If someone sits down, um, you know, it's it's the more natural position to take a poop. So your butthole naturally opens more than when you're standing up. I think we needed that after such a serious yeah. topic. <laughs> Yeah. So if you are new to the podcast, do please remember to like, uh, share it, share it, but don't share it with kids just flying head with them in the chest. Instagram now. Um, share Instagram and now, yeah. 
And please do subscribe because every subscriber we get, Darren does have a masturbation session session to himself. So eventually, what will what will happen is he'll just be constantly masturbating. Hopefully, which would kind of be yeah, it it would <laughs> make these podcasts more interesting, oh and he'd have friction burn, and it'd be terrible for us all. Um, but yeah, we do we do really appreciate you listening if you got this far. Um, you know, God because you. To, to get to here, you need a you need a strong constitution. A strong um, they're running, and a, and streaming str- through the streets by now, like they're <laughs> <laughs> crying about Foxconn and, and leaking buttholes, um, oh, and on possibly contaminated acid that Owen sold them because he's a massive drug dealer. No one I know what listens to this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you share it on your Instagram. You pr- they probably do. So until next week, you've been sheep. We've been acid. Enjoy your come down. We'll be back next week in pod form.